Nobody want to deal with him because the boy rude him. This is person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after Please the video. Jay's journal, entry one. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm having really back on YouTube. Oh, what? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Jerry. Hey, you don't know already. Listen, I know I've been gone for about five, six months, but I apologize. It's 2022. Happy New Year. I'm back readier than ever. I believe the last time I was here, you lots were called Jip Nation. Change your name. You lots are called the Royal Army because it's the King J era and I've come to fuck it up this year. Yeah, I'm ready to be consistent. I'm ready to be relatable and I'm here to talk about some things. So I know you lots can see the title. Yeah, I've come here ready to talk about my relationship with my dad. For a lot of you that may know, I came on social media and I shared my homeless this journey, my mental health journey and the relationship dynamic between me and my mum and through that it was very heartwarming to see how much people I was able to inspire because I didn't know all of us were in the same boat. So yeah, I just want to continue keeping that a part of my brand, be being able to remain relatable and just share my journey. And in me doing that, please guys, remain respectful. Yeah, Have your opinions, but voice them respectfully. This is my journey, my trauma, this is personal to me. So as I'm coming on this platform and I'm speaking, please don't make me for this up, you know? yeah? Alright, cool. Big up my sponsors. Trend him. <laughs> Guys, Trend him is fashionable and affordable jewelry. When I say the quality is amazing, I have been rocking these everywhere. Cause Guys, it's excellent value for money to say the least. And they're full of unique designs to cater to your own personal style. And it doesn't matter what country you're in because they have over 6,000 products in 22 different countries. So make sure you guys shop yours now. And I'm definitely wearing these glasses. Damn. So guys, I've chosen my jewellery, this is what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the glasses, I'm wearing the rings, I'm wearing the skull necklace and the gold chain, right? So, let's talk about the relationship dynamic between me and my dad, I just want to say, listen, no disrespecting, this video is not here to slander him or anything like that, but the man is a son of a b that is the truth. The guy is disrespectful and that's why we're not speaking now. But again, this video is not here to slander anybody. I'm not trying to attack him or anything like that. I'm just relaying what my experience was like growing up without him and yeah, how it's affected me. Do you know what I mean? So for you guys to get the full context of everything here, yeah, I'm going to start from the beginning of how my dad and my mum met and all that kind of stuff here. So they met in high school. You know the local high school lover situation. You, just, you know the ones there? Yeah, he saw a sweet one. He was like, yeah, I want to chat to her. That was my mom. All that kind of stuff. And then my mum came over there as well them to you i don't I, they were together for a little bit and then they broke up my mom fell pregnant and then my dad from my understanding my dad never wanted me like he was just like nah <laughs> from my understanding my dad was very abusive towards my mom as well from what i heard from other people many other people that were around at that time they were saying that yeah the relationship dynamic wasn't great and my dad didn't actually want my mom to have me but my mom said no this is my child i'm gonna have my child and we're 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 responsible what nobody wants to say i wonder where's that attitude now but um yeah she persisted that she's gonna have me and here i am today my dad and my mum was never actually together from the time I was born, from what I can remember. I don't actually remember them being under the same household together. I don't actually remember like a family dinner together or anything like that. They've always been broken up or on and off. Or on and off. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I just have some memories of it being not the best relationship between both of them. Do you know what I mean? So anyways, oh, when my mum came over here, she saw that her papers, my dad, he did his own thing. And I just, from my understanding, like, you know, growing up, I never liked my dad. I don't know what it was. Every baby picture that I have, my fierce push up and I limb something. I'm gonna put some pictures up here for you guys to see. Like my face was push up and everything. Like me never like do you. Me not my, my spirit just never did take him. My spirit just never did take him. I don't know what it was. My spirit just did not take to him. And every baby picture, anytime the guy would hold me, anytime I'm with him, I'm like, I wanna go home. I don't know why. Sometimes I felt bad, but it's just like I was a huge mummy's boy. Do you know what I mean? I loved being at home with my mum. I loved my mum. Anytime my dad would take me, I feel like I'm being kidnapped. But my dad didn't look after me i'm not gonna lie to you like maybe he was not as present as my mom wanted him to be but i remember every weekend i'll probably be at my dad's house or every two weeks i'll be at my dad's house my dad will buy me food i never what hungered or wanted for anything when i was with my dad hair plaited all that kind of stuff like my dad will always make sure that i'm patterned do you know what i mean it was never one of them things where oh he would have me around him and he would neglect me kind of thing that never happened he always made sure i was good uh, oh by the way guys i'm the firstborn on both my mom and my dad's side as well i'm the firstborn and yeah from ages one to seven i'll say my dad's there and at 2009 what life looked like was he had three other kids two boys and one other girl so there's four children on my dad's side and three on my mom's side including me so in 2009 my dad had three other children and my mom had 
one other child, which is my sister that you lots may know of. 2009, my dad's dad died, right? And my dad never actually fully sorted saw out his papers. So he was able to remain in the UK. But if he was to ever leave, it would be a big issue with him coming back. He knew if he was to ever go down there for any kind of funeral or burial, he would never be able to come back. And everyone told him this. But at the time, I can understand the fact that your parent had died and it's like, you know, you want to go back, you want that form of closure. But at the time you had three babies, yeah? Months old babies. You actively made the choice to leave your children behind to go to Jamaica, knowing that you could never come back. And for me, that was very, mm, I would say traumatizing, but a pinnacle moment in my life. And the reason why it was a pinnacle moment in my life, because it was, it was like, that's when everything had changed for me. Me and my mom's relationship had changed. Me and my dad's relationship had changed. Um, I went from having a dad to no dad. And then it's like, I, had from I went from having a good mom to more of a neglectful mom. And then it's also, yeah, mistreatment came in do you know what i mean before he had left everyone warned him listen you can't go you can't go if you go you won't be able to come back you've got children over here come on now be responsible think clearly use your brain i know it sounds harsh but they were saying like your dad's already dead whatever whatever but i can understand that those that have probably lost a parent you probably know what that probably may have been like but from our perspective from my perspective looking at it now it's like you've got four children over here infants plus four different baby mums right why would you up and leave your kids your whole life there's nothing for you in Jamaica right the only thing that's probably over there is your mum but every other sibling is over here for you your kids are over here baby mums are over here your responsibilities are in the UK and you actively upped yourself neglected your responsibilities and left that's how I look at it and it's like when he left obviously he didn't leave my mum a cent and within itself that was a big problem because you're done no said Jimmy because I got talk about oh he never leave me one dollar not even ten pound go ask your father anything I asked my mum for he was go ask your father ask your father ask your father me not have no money where your papa there where your papa there we, like, that's what it turned into and he was like the whole relationship between my mum and my dad was unhealthy they never had a healthy co-parenting co relationship yet it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Literally, at the time, when my dad left, my mum had got into another relationship as well. And that was my sister's dad. So um, she had already moved on and all that kind of stuff. So I think at that point, it was more of a thing where, listen, you have one man here that's minding his pitney. Where's the next dad that's supposed to be minding you kind of thing? Like, when my dad was there, there was a little bit more balance. No f we could run when my dad was there or else my mum would hear my dad's mouth i feel like my dad being there kind of forced a good relationship do you know what i mean between me and my mum because it's like you you wouldn't want to fuck up with my dad there kind of thing do you know what i mean not saying that she was ever scared of my dad but like just to avoid the ratata and the ruckus you're gonna be yourself do you know what i mean with that being said i felt like looking back at it, it was like my sister dad was there my sister dad was financially stepping up my dad wasn't there my dad wasn't financially stepping up so why am i really going to give you anything it was more so of a thing where your time is up you've been evicted right so that's what it kind of like was for me and yeah like my mum just started becoming more neglectful towards me started being mistreated certain ways when my dad had left and that's why I can never really forget that time for me going through secondary school ah uh, it didn't really affect me so much it only started affecting me more in secondary school secondary school you know those are ages where you start you know girls grow boobies and breasts and this this is that man then your penis get bigger and you're starting to learn new feelings and emotions about yourself this is that and the next and going through secondary school I had to have a little counsel so you know in secondary school we have your local council anger management thing yeah I had to have one of those and you know through that like I spoke to them about the way how I was feeling and obviously you couldn't say it too much because your mom's looking at you hey if you ever met social service called Matt Pomodoro said like I'll be on blood clap hey trying to say too much it was more of a thing where like when my dad left he was promising me like yo I'm gonna come back I'm gonna come back and I remember that day so distinctly like the day before he left it was one of the things where me and him sat in the car and he had got me McDonald's and he was like yo I'm coming back you know I love you this is something the next and I remember it so clearly like he sat me in the car and he was like I love you like I'm coming back soon this is that and I remember the day that he dropped me back home from that day I never saw him again and literally um he would be on the house phone he would call me he kept in contact and he started calling me for the first couple of weeks or first couple of yeah first couple of weeks and then the phone became a bit more silent and it's just like I had to just <laughs> it's like I had to just whatever my sister's dad I didn't like him so it was like my dad 
wasn't there and I didn't like the other man in the household. No one there to kind of prevent anything. No one there to kind of save me. If anything, my dad used to be able to save me. Do you know what I mean? Every couple of weeks, he's like, yeah, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm sorting out the plane ticket to come back. And imagine like being a young child. One of the things for me was like, I'm sitting at the, at the stairs, basically waiting for my dad to come back. The man never knocked on the door once. Yeah. I was expecting the door to open for my dad to come through the door. And I'm like, dad, like, do you know what I mean? As much as I didn't like the nigga, as much as me and the guy never really had a bond, but it's one of the things where like I still needed my dad do you know what I mean like I still had a, a, some form of relationship with my dad and I felt like if my dad was there a lot of things would have gone different in my life and that's one of the things I kind of resent towards him every year he's like yeah I'm coming back son don't worry about it I'm gonna be here for you this is starting the next I'm coming back I'm coming back and um to be honest with you there's been a couple of times where my dad has tried to organize me coming to Jamaica but because of my fear of planes I was very scared of planes very scared of hurricanes and I have one bad memory in Jamaica that's why I never really wanted to go back so that's that's why when my mum ever asked me if I ever want to come to Jamaica, it was a no. If my dad asked me to come to Jamaica, it was a no. Because I was very scared of going to Jamaica. And it was one of the things where I'm thinking like, I'm not going to exit myself or go anywhere when you decided that you wanted to leave me. And I was like, put my, put my, I'm going to, I'm going to go on a plane and I've watched snakes on the plane and the plane crashing and snakes all no, 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 no. I was never going on a plane for the plane to crash. Suppose, no. Because I, I had what snakes in the plane back in the day as well. And I was thinking, suppose the snakes come, come on a blood clot and come bite me up and bite up my penis when I go p p pee in the thing. No, I didn't want that. So I said, no, I'm not going on no plane. I'm not going on no plane. That's not happening. You jump on the plane and you come here. Let me turn around the border. I'll come to the border and I'll meet you. Yeah, how about that? I was not going on a frigging plane. I believe the guy even tried to Skype me a couple times as, as well when Skype was popping back then. And as I was going through secondary school, obviously new emotions, this is that. And I started analyzing that. My dad's absence was affecting me a lot because it was affecting me and my mom's relationship. My mom started becoming more neglectful towards me and more abusive towards me. And it was like certain things I wish my dad was there for, he wasn't there. And it's like having my dad there making so much false promises about him coming back and never coming back. Like it was hurtful. I'm not going to lie. It did hurt a nigga because it's like, where is my dad? If I never had my dad, I would have never known what it would be like to have a relationship with my dad. But the fact that I had a dad, to not have a dad, that's what hurts a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, you had something and it's not there anymore and, it, and it's gone by choice. Do you know what I mean? That's what was kind of creeping up on me. Those kind of traumas were trying to creep up on me. So um, I remember there was one time that counselor actually invited my mum into the school for a session. And I turned around and I said to my mum, listen, like, I really do want to build a relationship with my dad. Like I do miss my dad and that, that really does affect me. And my mum looked at me and you know, like she kind of, I don't know, like, she didn't feel hurt, but like she felt hurt for me because I was just looking her like mom like it really does affect me about the fact that i don't have a dad like i miss him like i don't have a father figure here for the guys that may be wa watching this or, or even more might be able to but just but a bit of direction you, bit, you need a bit of dominance in the life someone to kind of strengthen you up because when you're around women it's like you become more emotional or this is that and the next like you pick up on more feminine things but like as a man like you need a man there to teach you how to be a man i asked for that so much it got to the point where my mom had to ask somebody else to step in to be a father figure because my dad wasn't able to do that and for that i was just pretty nice i was like i'm not anybody else's responsibility like my dad chose to leave me do you know what i mean and it's like you decided to leave knowing that you wouldn't be able to come back like my mom sorted out her papers but you left this country knowing that you wouldn't be able to come back and i'm not gonna lie like my dad did financially support where he could he did send me to western union a couple of times and you know then back in the day i had to do some temporary shit to get the money back in the day because anyhow i made my mom here but that i got a certain amount of money big problem big war she wants the money do you know what I mean and it's like my mom never used to give me like do you know what I mean so it's like anytime my dad used to send me a little do I have to send it in someone else's name or go to one of your western union that I know that will bump up the age for me and allow me to collect the money but yeah it was just literally one of them things where like growing up um, without a dad just in them earlier years it was just like the trauma started to build up a bit more and then what really tipped it over the edge was the disrespect like my dad was so 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 disrespectful he can say that you know he gave me some money from time to time but that money came with contingencies and t's and c's and conditions like it's either he would want me to chat to his girlfriend that he has a problem with at the time to try and get them back together or something something 
speak to some baby mum. Listen, he left here on no good conditions with any of his baby mum. He had problems with all of his baby mums, blood. Disrespect of what I made, but nobody want to deal with him. Not a blood clot want to deal with him. Nobody want to deal with him because the boy rude in this. He rude. The rude. The boy rude. Because he's so disrespectful, baby mothers were looking at me funny. My mom was looking at me funny. Everybody was looking at me funny. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, I am my dad's child and my dad's disrespectful. What you are doing? What are you doing here? And that's the vibe that I was kind of getting from anyone. Like, the guy would even get me on the phone talking to certain people just to see someone I can help him out of a bit. Of, you know what I mean? It's just like, because of the way how he is, because of the way how he's so disrespectful, nobody wants to help him. And that's what it was. And the guy was going around giving people wrong names as well. Listen, there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people didn't my dad because can imagine you having a child with someone and you not knowing their real name you're putting a false name on children and kids do you know what i mean and it's just like listen i understand where some of the baby moms are coming from still so the fact that they didn't want to help him or deal with him i kind of get it but here's when things started to take a huge twist for me now so it's like me and my dad's relationship started getting a bit rocky in terms of like anything that goes on with my mom i'll be calling him to try to intervene and see if we can get some mediation going on because my mom's mistreating me and she's with next guy and nobody's listening to me no one's understanding how I feel So I'm going to my dad Saying that yo My mum's treating me this way My mum's doing this Can you please go and speak to her But it's always ending up in yeah, all of that's going on, do you know what I mean? It's always back and forth, it's never a sense of whatever, but in a sense, he helps because he kind of threatens her, but then it's like it doesn't help because I still gotta live with her after you threatened her. I do believe if my dad was here, I wouldn't have ended up being homeless, I wouldn't have this, 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 that, but we'll get into all of that. As time has progressed, my dad starts becoming more disrespectful. He started disrespecting my mum a lot, he started disrespecting the baby mums a lot, and to the point where no one wants to, I'm telling you guys, before I even filmed this video, I looked back at the last message between me and my dad, and I went I'm actually going to put it up on the screen. It says... That text message... I don't know, like... To me, I think the audacity... The audacity, right? You're disrespectful from where you are. You are. You haven't been a father. You haven't been here because you actively chose to leave. But you you feel like it's okay to disrespect people the way you have. As much as my mom did what she did, she was a mom up until a certain point. You neglected your responsibilities as a father. You decided to leave. No one forced you to go. You decided to leave. My mom stayed and she did, she, she fulfilled her responsibilities up until a certain point. You cannot disrespect another parent when you haven't been a parent. A non-parent can't disrespect a parent. You can't tell somebody how to parent when you haven't been a parent. Because she stayed and she did what she had to do up until a certain point. Despite whether she won't kick me out abuse me whatever she did in the end but at the end of the day she still provided me a roof where is you that's the way how i look at it and for you to come and feel like you're allowed to disrespect people and talk to people a certain way hence why i don't speak to you currently because you're very disrespectful i'm tired of jamaican fathers thinking like it's okay to mistreat their baby mothers a certain way not because my mom has done certain things doesn't mean it's okay for you to speak to people that way or your baby mothers you know what i mean you've got four children over here that you're not looking after you're not looking after me i don't know if you're looking after the rest but i pre from an angle was like if you're there disrespecting my mum a certain way and you're disrespecting people around you a certain type of way I was never going to put myself on a plane to come and see you for you to disrespect me face to face it was never happening I'd rather live without a father than live with a father that's going to put more trauma in me imagine I had both of them putting trauma into me like do you know how fucked up I'll probably be right now my dad's been blocked for about two years and that's the god almighty truth like I don't wish to have a relationship with him because of how disrespectful he is I'm tired of the Jamaican community saying that oh but it's your father Father, it's your mum, you only get one of them. Listen to me. If you're right hand off in your chop it off. If you are there and you are holding me back and you are disrespecting me and you are abusing, I'm going to cut you off. It is not normal. Hence why this whole generation is up, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And mental health is so real. A lot of these things traumatize me till today. And that's the truth. And it's like, when will accountability be taken? A lot of things I'll do differently between me and my child because it's like, me growing up without my dad, it was just like, okay, cool. It wouldn't have been as bad if the disrespect wasn't there. But it's the fact that you felt like you can not only speak to my mum like that, but you can speak to me like this. Whatever, for, are you are you mad or are you sick in your head? Living my life now, I don't resent him. It's more of a thing where I'm living my life for me. 
just like how I'm living like my life without my mum. A lot of the hurt, if anything, comes from my mum, but my dad, I'm not really hurt by anything. I just don't long for or desire a relationship with my dad at all. Like, if I never have a relationship with my dad, if my dad again, sorry, I, I, I wouldn't feel no type of way about it. You know what I'm saying to you? I really wouldn't. I'd feel more of a type of way with my mum, if anything, than my dad. But I don't feel no type of way either way. Because it's like the disrespect that this man can give from where he is. You're really, uh, you're really doing a keyboard warrior. Do you know what I mean? And what I showed you guys wasn't just that. But he feels like, because he used to send me a little bit of money and this is that and the next. The ultimate thing was, it came with condition. Do this for me, do that for me, or speak to this person, or this is the stat. Or I'm hearing about it in the end. One of the things that even caused me to start speaking to him was the fact that when my mum kicked me out, he wanted me to pick sides between him and her. And it was like, I was never going to pick sides. Both of you are as bad as each other. I am not picking those sides. Why am I going to pick sides for? He's thinking, oh, Oh, rah, like, my mum's done me dirty. Come to this side, do you know what I mean? Like, it was never going to be a that thing. But he's like, oh, so what? You're still picking up for your mum, this, this, that, and the next. So I said, no, it's got nothing to do with picking up for my mum. But it's one of them things where I'm not going to condone you disrespecting my mum. You cannot disrespect my mum because you did not provide a roof over my head. You cannot disrespect my mum because you was not playing the fatherly role that you should have been playing that she had to play. I've never come on this platform and just bash my mum for whatever it is or whatever, whatever, whatever. I've just spoken the truth. My mum, a lot of times, happen i'm not my mum is no saint but what i will give her was she provided a roof over my head up until a certain point regardless of what happened in that roof under that roof sorry she did provide a roof for me up until a certain point and i give her props for that but in terms of what she did that's a whole other kettle of a fish but my dad can't ever come against my mum and be like oh but you did this and you're because you, you wasn't there. So when I decided in my mind that I wasn't picking a side, I guess it was one of them things where, you know, yeah, f off now kind of thing. Because he went from saying how much he was going to help me whilst I was being homeless and stuff like that. And then because I wasn't picking sides with him, he just left me in the lurch. The guy denied me help. Like, he, he went from saying that how much he was going to help me. Like, he was going to help me find somewhere to live. He was going to help me with my rent. This is that and the next. And just for the simple fact that I wasn't going to bash my mum and I wasn't going to bring her down and all that kind of stuff. Ah, oh, I'm not bad at help you no more. And you're depending on mum's side. Why are you still picking up for your mum? This is that and the next and whatever, whatever. And it's just like, same thing with my auntie as well. Because I wasn't trying to pick sides with you and my dad. You, you lot still don't want to help me. So it was just like, family will fail you. Don't disrespect my mum. Don't talk about my mum. Don't do none of that. Because at the end of the day, in my head, at that point, she was still my mum. I was still kind of protective over her, even though she did what she did. He didn't like that. He was thinking, oh, my mum did this, this, that, and the next. Like, why are you still defending her? This is that, and this that. It's got nothing to do with defending. It's the fact that that's my mum. She's my mum. Don't disrespect my mum. And from that, he sent me this text message. What was this text message sent? This text message was sent to me, and this was the last day me and him spoke. The 2nd of August, 2019. I was just left in the lurch by myself to fend for myself. And I feel no type of way towards it. That's me being real. Me being completely honest, I'm living my life completely fine without my dad, but it would have been nice if I did have my dad there. Never will there ever be a point where I would just leave my child behind willingly. I would never leave my child knowing that you would never be able to come back. That doesn't make sense to me. Never would I ever disrespect my child, call my child certain names. I'm telling you the way how the guy has slandered and cussed me out, tell me to suck my mom, batty boy, all these things. Fuck you. Well, him call me all time in here, man. It rinse me out good, you know. I'm happy within myself knowing that I might not ever have a relationship with my dad. Like, I'm okay. Like, if I die tomorrow, I'll be fine with it. But I do might want to make an attempt in the future to maybe see and have a conversation or ask him why certain things happen. Why was you so disrespectful towards certain people? Why this? Why that? Do you know what I mean? Realistically, like, why do you have a horrible relationship with women? That's something I would love to know. Like, why do you disrespect people down to your own sister do you know what i mean like you don't have a good relationship with nobody nobody at all everyone has an issue with you you know i'm not bashing him there was a point where i longed for a dad there was so long i spent wishing that my dad would show up one day and he would teach me and he'll show me the ropes how to be a man how to do this but you left it up to my mom to do out of choice i'm thinking that you can disrespect her you can't handle them something there my youth you can't understand, no, you can't do them something there. Where you are, I feel like in his life right now, he must be miserable. <laughs> I'm the, well, I don't know how he feels, but I'm the only child that hasn't gone to see him. That's because the rest of them don't understand. Me understand. Me witness a lot growing up. I've gone through a lot of stuff growing up, do you know what I mean? Not to say that I've gone through the worst, but the guy has put me through and put my mom through a lot. It's like, if you can't be a father from where you're at on the phone, you really feel I'm going to come there to face disappointment. 
And it's not gonna happen. That's literally my standpoint on it. I don't feel no type of way. I'm not hurt by him at all. I'm happy knowing that I might not have a relationship with him. It's my life, do you know what I mean? I don't know, it's just, I know what not to do when it's my turn. I know how I would like to treat a woman. I know how I would like my family to be because I don't want history to repeat itself again. You know, that's me being real. That's me being so real. That's all for now, I guess. I spoke about a lot. I had to hustle and do everything by myself. Like, fam, I've gone on Google and I've asked Google certain things that I should have been able to ask my dad. There was never that open line of communication there. Never been able to just speak to my dad and ask him certain things. Just never had that there. Like, I had two parents that were emotionally unavailable. It was just me by myself for the most part. It did hurt, man. To have a dad, to no longer have a dad, it hurt, man. It hurt. It, hurt. it did hurt. I'm not gonna lie to you, it hurt. I did feel it. If my dad was there, I would have had a better quality of life. He's not here, and I haven't had a good quality of life. So I'm having to kind of fix myself up from all the emotional damage and trauma that all the seeds I've been sown of trauma, I'm having to rape them and get rid of them. Literally, guys. I don't know what the purpose of this video was, but I just wanted to speak about it because I've never spoken about it before. And I know a lot of people go through the same thing. A lot of people do wish that they had a dad there. And fathers, if you're watching this, please step up. You are needed. <laughs> Single moms can't do it alone. And I actually commend you lots because it's not easy. It's not easy. Listen, a phone call goes a long way. A 10 pound goes a long way. It goes a long way. So if you can step up, be a blood clot father. Stop being so whatless, man. If you was old enough to push your wood inside of a woman, you're old enough to mind the picnic because you're busting that hour. That's a girl I mind to shoot. Cause if me busting that somebody, you know, we know that I know the consequences of busting. Your boss, you have a picnic now, mind your picnic, man. But yeah, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you want more videos like this, let me know. I'm back, ready than ever. Um, I kind of lost my energy throughout the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was just like a little heart to heart. I just wanted to speak to you guys, see how, like, you know what I mean? I hope you guys like, comment if you need to tell me you guys subscribe. Welcome, my royal army. This is the King J era. Guys, it's about like, what? <laughs> 1.43 in the morning. I'm out, yeah? Bye. Trend him, jewelry, yeah. Yo, pull up with that drip, drip, minor. You know my style in a regular. Stylish playboy, we ain't similar. I'm a shartish in a regular.